Yep. You know, like the ring. Yeah. So anyway, that's how we got to the book of Revelation. <laughs> and uh, we have some interesting things to talk about. There's a lot going on in the world today, too, that's uh, yeah. pointing toward that end time. Mm -hmm. One of the last things, I, recent things I just heard about was they're, they're examining and keeping track of some uh, red heifers that they found in Texas. And they have to be a certain age, and they can't have any more than something like <laughs> got red heifers. 16 <laughs> white hairs in their whole body mm. by the time they reach a certain age before they would qualify for uh, sacrifice. For, so they, and they can't dedicate the new temple before without having the ashes of a red heifer. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say about it? Well, uh, my son and daughter and her boyfriend um, have decided to go into raising uh, cattle for me. Well, they happen to be red. A couple of them are red peppers and the other ones are steers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Would that be something if wow. it turned out to be the ones? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Just but they've been trying to find red heifers that qualify for yeah. years. Oh. And they yeah. can't get them because they always have so white good. hair. Yeah. And like Steve mentioned this morning, mm -hmm. and, and you, God's timing. Yeah. The, it's yeah. only at God's timing, timing that these things will come about. Right. God's already picked it. And that's why I think <coughs> some things have happened in America. It wasn't time yet. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Pretty strange things have happened in our country in the last few years when you huh. start thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, probably. And you think, why is that happening <laughs> then? How come it happened that way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. um, so we talk, we talk about, of course, I'm a great weather follower, and but I've talked about how there is really no place now in the United States that you can go where you won't experience severe weather. Mm -hmm. There used to be areas where you were kind of insulated from that kind of thing. But now, um, like we ever heard of tornadoes up in Minnesota, right. in yeah. South Dakota, you know, yeah. in the Dakota, yeah. it's like, tornado, are you kidding? Yeah. But there, uh, yeah, of, there's really no place that's immune to it. A lot of different things have happened in the last mm -hmm. few years. Yeah. Um, so, we'll be starting tonight with chapter one, I kind of want to make sure we get more out of it than we did the last time. So we'll probably read it a little slower. Maybe talk about it a little more. And so be thinking during the weeks too. If you see something that, that fits with end times, what's happening, try to write it down or try to remember to bring it so we can talk about it. Um, but before we start our study and before we go to prayer, is there any praises you want to share? Well, I want to thank everybody in this church that's reached out in the last few days, that's worked real hard, every one of them, to put our uh, program together. Our, and uh, you've done a beautiful, beautiful job. And I... Pam and Sandy, have, <laughs> they've been practically living down here for the last three or four days. <laughs> but it's been great that everybody has cooperated and helped, and I can't thank them enough. Yeah, I'd have and to say. And the church has been doing it for a while now. It's amazing how, how much our church has yeah. pulled together, I know, and, and for the, weeks. Um, oh. I was taking care of my family and, and all that. She lost her mom. Our Rebecca lost her mom oh just a few no. weeks ago. Oh, dear. Your and the family, <clears throat> the church family had has yeah. just, even when she was in her last weeks, oh, really just was, reaching out. And it was just amazing here. And don't know where we would have been without her. There's the two sisters. <laughs> and then, okay, let me scoot down. And there was <laughs> two other people in our church that lost their relatives. Mm -hmm. So we've had four losses. I felt, I felt like Pastor was, was choosing a reminder today with the sermon as well of... Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 
Yeah. No, I, I just notice how God brings things together. You know, that, that message, what you said, what we drew. And, and my brother, who has not been in my life for decades, you know, spent weeks at my house. Mm -hmm. And uh, the line of communication is open. Amen. Oh, good. Um, Praise God. God. Yeah, good. Very I know that would make your mom happy. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was with her when she went. Oh, he but, and my father. But I mean, the lines being open. Oh, yeah. That would be a big encouragement. Yeah. So, so well, Sandy, we're talking about what? What about the... What about my mom was on us because we lost her on the 22nd. But like, what opened the communication up? Um, he has not really... He's been estranged from the, 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 the siblings, his siblings. Um, but he's always... Um, had close contact with mom and, and whatnot. Um, he lost his daughter at the age of seven, and there was a lot of bitterness many, many years ago. It was in 2005 when she died, and it was his only child. And he watched his younger unmarried sisters pop kids out, and you know they still had their children after he left. There was just a lot there. Yeah. And so um, many, many years later, it feels like we've finally been able to um, get past the, Break the, the pain. Yeah, yeah. Um, he really, really came through when mom one on hospice, he stepped up and he really supported me immensely in ways I never expected he, he would. Yeah, he was really super good. It, and this is Rebecca, that's my sister Pam, you know Sandy. <laughs> It's Calvin down at the end, yeah. troublemaker. That's, that's the dishwasher right that's there. That's what I made you think. He was right in the kitchen, weren't you? And you know Steve and Cheryl, this yeah. is Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. And Sandy would be glad to hear we've chosen Revelation to do our next study. And how did you think about that? We prayed about it and put three books of the Bible in the offering plate this morning before church. And I asked Bella to draw a name out, Close and, she, your eyes. <laughs> and <laughs> she picked out Revelation. And that happened to be what our sermon was on this morning as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Here we go. Well, dummy me, I got my glasses, so I can't read or nothing. So I can't listen. <laughs> yes, you can. I'll let you know. Did you happen to started. get that uh, text message from Jason about Shaley and the operation? Oh. Uh, you mean Victor? Yes. 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 Good. Very, very yes. good. Yeah. I haven't heard anymore uh, since then. Is she home? Is she home now? Or? Young man we know from West Jay Z. Yeah. His wife was having a major surgery. They were going to have to like take her a whole bunch of her insides out, lay them on a table, re re uh, construct or operate on a vein, wasn't it? Vein that like goes to your kidneys. heart or kid oh. kidney. kidney. And it was supposed to be really involved in a long period of, of uh, staying in the hospital and recovery and we were very concerned about it. And the men's, at the men's retreat we prayed for her and I'm sure there's lots of other prayers went up too and it went really well. It was shorter uh, than expected. Uh, she's she, doing she well. She stay in ICU as long as they want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know that's their only child. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I asked about that and said, yeah, that's their only child. Yeah. Yeah. So how traumatic that would have been. Yeah. For Dale to Tracy. So we praise the Lord for that. So uh, let's go to prayer and then I got a few things to say and we'll get started with Revelation. Uh, special needs tonight. My brother Joe should almost be home if he's not yet. Nicole and Adam are on their way to Philadelphia, or New Jersey actually. Fly out in the morning. And what else? You can pray for my knees and my eyes. <laughs> you can pray for my her knees are killing me. You can barely walk. Yeah. And I just found out two days before I came up that I have glaucoma and macular thinning, which was a shock because I didn't, I knew I was losing my sight, but I thought it was something else, and but that's what they're saying, but they're still running more tests, but it's, it's hard to, it's hard to drive now, mm -hmm. and I got a long trip <laughs> ahead of me. Yeah, uh, yeah so I can use some prayer for that. Thanks and thanks. <laughs> well, I had a knee replacement, and it did go real well, 
and now it's bothering my other knee because it made my leg an inch and a quarter longer. Oh. So I think that's what's affecting my other knee and both of them are just a little painful. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we should remember all of the caregivers and the first responders and all down in, in Florida and the areas that were hit by the hurricane. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very traumatic experience to have to go searching for bodies. And I've done that in my career, and it's pretty traumatic, especially when you come across young people. But when you think of what these people had to go through to dig through rubble and, and then try to comfort those that have lost their homes or their loved ones or, or both, mm -hmm. um, it can't help but affect you. No matter how tough you think you are, it, it's hard on, on them. And uh, thank God that uh, there's so many people that have stepped forward to bring all kinds of uh, supplies and, and hope. Think of the pastors down there, of the churches, people coming to church and just having nothing left and starting all over again. Yeah. We're so blessed to be sitting in this room and have what we have. All right. Anything else? Sister Cheryl, are you getting all this? <laughs> Best you can, and we'll join you. So let's pray. Okay. Well, Lord, we do come humbly before you, Lord, and just thanking you for this day. Um, that uh, you've separated especially for yourself and being able to come into your sanctuary and just worshiping you, Lord. We just thank you for that. We thank you for the church family, Lord, that comes together and lifts up and holds people when they're going through traumatic times, Lord God. And Father, we just pray for healing for uh, Pam and... Uh, we ask that you be with Sue as she goes through her chemo, and um, anyone that is is uh, having problems uh, physically and emotionally, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for another chance to dig into Revelation, Lord. We thank you for Brother Paul and, and leading it, and we ask that uh, you just anoint his words and help us to uh, receive it and um, apply it to our lives, Lord. And we give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Uh, start with, <coughs> Revelation does not have an S. So, yeah. you've got to remember that. People that don't know their Bible real well will call it Revelations. Mm -hmm. It's Revelation. And uh, the book of Revelation is is difficult to understand. A lot of churches and Christians stay away from it. It's easy to get into arguments over what it means and what it says. Um, so we want to be careful. Um, but it's a very needful book. It's about the what happens uh, before Jesus comes back. And that's why we want to know about it. We, that could happen soon and we want to be ready. Uh, but so keep that in mind as we go through it there will be things that we do not know God doesn't reveal everything uh, but he does reveal you want enough my glasses? Okay. Time we're trying to get her a, a distraction here <laughs> I need glasses at home like I got sorry. three pairs and I left them in mom's house just, just when they read it just listen have any questions are we ready to keep we're, going? We'll keep going. <laughs> Do I have to separate you guys? <laughs> oh, so where was I? So I, I've got a question. Okay. Revelation. Um, did this happen when Jesus came back the first time? Okay, well, that's a good question. Uh, the time period that the book of Revelation was actually written is somewhere around 90 to 95 AD. So it was about 60 years after Jesus went back to heaven that the Apostle John wrote the book of Revelation. Okay. And you'll see that he, he was 
uh, told what to write. And so he writes about some things that have already happened, even before his time, some things about things that are happening at his time when he was living, and some things that were going to happen in the future. So, so who told him what to write? Jesus first appeared to him, oh. and, and then uh, angels also spoke to him. Okay. Uh, the Holy Spirit, of course, is guiding him. Um, so he's, we have to remember some of the things we read are about things that have already happened. Some were happening during John's time. Some were yet to happen. And uh, also keep in mind that the book of Revelation is not all in chronological order. So you'll read about what's happening and then all of a sudden it'll start talking about something way in the future. And then it might jump back to something that's already happened. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind. So there was a pretty good chance that some of this is written by a bunch of drunken monks somewhere? No, no, no. All of God's word was given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. His word tells us that. Yeah, but you said he didn't write it all, right? No, I, no. I said Jesus didn't tell him at all, everything. Oh. The uh, angel would appear to, to John as well okay. and tell him what to write. But even what, G, what Jesus is telling him, the Holy Spirit is still telling John when it was time to write, okay. what to write. John didn't sit around and dream this up himself. You'll understand it a little bit better as we go. Okay. Um, and, and the book of Revelation is written uh, in segments. Like, I got a little note here. Uh, the first four chapters is written specifically to uh, churches. The seven churches, it's called. And then after that, it talks about visions. And then it talks about God's triumph. And then it talks about the new creation which we heard from the pastor this morning, mm -hmm. chapter 21. Uh, it was written by John while he was in exile. John was, during, right after Jesus rose from the dead, remember when we read in Acts that people began to persecute the Christians and they started scattering around the world, spreading the gospel, and the church was born and it started to grow. Well, as they started killing off the Christians, they killed, started killing the apostles. The church kept on growing because God wouldn't be stopped that way. But John, they exiled him to an island uh, yeah. out at sea. But while he was out there, he was still serving God. And God appeared to him and had him write the last book of the Bible. Uh, okay. Um, now, you guys probably got some notes, too, about the book of Revelation. Do you have something that I didn't cover? This one has an outline. Okay. Which is kind of convenient. It's, it talks about chapter 1, Christ reveals himself to John. Um, chapters 2 and 3, letters to the seven churches. Chapter four talks about the heavenly throne, four and five. Um, chapters six through eight, he starts to reveal the seven seals. Um, eight through 11, the seven trumpets. 12 through 14, the seven figures. And 15 through 16, talks about the bowls of wrath. Chapters 17 through 19, we'll talk about the Babylon judged, the judgment of Babylon. Uh, chapters 19 through 21 talk about the beast and the false prophet being judged. Chapter 20 will talk about Satan being judged and then go into uh, also the thousand year reign. Um, we'll talk about rebellion and the final judgment. And then chapter 21 that the pastor preached on, new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. Okay. So as we go through Revelation, we can review that outline says that chapter is about. The first one was about Jesus. Like you said, there's Jesus. stuff during his present time. There's stuff from before his time and then 
future. Okay. I have a little summary if you want me to read it. What? I've got a little summary to it. If you want me to okay, it. go ahead. It says, visions of the wild, of the weird beast, candlesticks and sealed scrolls, dragons and falling stars, blood and violence, glory, majesty, mystery. The imagery of revelation can inspire and confuse. Interpreting it can stump the finest theologians or draw all out theological warfare. Revelation tells of the end times, but exactly what it means has often been dis debated. But one recurring image takes center stage. The risen Lord Jesus appears throughout the book as a lamb, as an awe-inspiring man, but always as the one who has conquered death and is now unquestionably the king. Jesus Christ rules and he is in charge in, this, in these visions and letters of future battle and future triumph. Look for Jesus in this book for his words of exhortation and comfort for his wrath against those who oppose him, but especially for his promise that he will soon return for his people and make all things new. That's pretty much it. It uh, gives a good picture of who Jesus is. And it's to me, it's like God is wrapping up the history of the church and he's putting it all in one package and getting us ready to enter heaven. I've got an uh, introduction here. Okay. Um, the book of Revelation was written by the Apostle John during his exile on the island of Patmos. John's purpose in writing this book was to give hope and encouragement to those Christians who were suffering severe persecution for their faith in Jesus Christ. These, these Christians need us to know that God controls whatever happens here on earth. Through the imagery and, and symbols, even though uh, they are sometimes difficult to understand. One thing is made clear. Jesus Christ is the Lord and ruler over everyone and everything, even powerful human governments. He is clearly, clearly in control and will someday judge and punish whatever evil, even Satan. He will also establish an everlasting kingdom with a new heaven and a new earth. Good. That's a good description. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now wait a minute, new heaven and new earth. So what? Is it that makes it sound like there's gonna be people living on earth too? Mm-hmm. He's making a new earth and heaven's gonna come down to earth. So when we say we go to heaven, those people are gonna come back down to earth. A new earth. And we'll re we'll be reading about that so when we, we get toward really the end. We don't really have a heaven in the sky, our heaven is on the earth. It will be then, eventually. And us that uh, believe in Jesus Christ, when the heavens come down, we'll be saved. We're either coming with them, or we're already going to be here. Mm -hmm. One or the other. But we'll be saved, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if, if we've accepted Jesus, we're already saved. Right. And, and, that's, and as long as we don't turn away, we're there. Does, okay. not, does not the word say that the sun and the moon and the stars will fall from the, from the sky? So as from what we know now, when we look into the sky, that's all going to be gone. That heaven, will, which is up here, will come down here. This is, Earth as we know it will no longer be. But what but did the you new say earth that? will be here. The, the moon and stars and what? The moon, sun. the stars, sun. and the sun will all fall from the sky uh, because it, the Bible tells us that the, that we don't need that light that because God, that God is, the light. is the, it provides the light right. we don't need we're not going to need that anymore. right there won't even be night right right don't want to be what night no more night you don't have night no more well, dark. I'll the lottery before he gets here <laughs> <laughs> you won't need it buddy I want to spend it all spend it in Alaska where the sun stays up so there's a certain month of the summer that the, in Alaska is mm -hmm. daylight all, all day. Yeah. Well, it always yeah. says there's no more darkness. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the best I can say is when you accepted Christ as your Savior, you won the lottery. Right. <laughs> That's good you got the best. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, are we ready to start? Okay, Calvin, start us out. We're chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, um, where am I here? Okay, the revelation of Jesus 
these words which God gave him to show his servants in what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to uh, his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this, of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take heart when it is written in because the time is near. Okay, let's pick apart for chapter mm -hmm. one, first paragraph. Mm -hmm. What do you see? What's that word revelation mean? Revealing. Unveiling. Revealing. Yes. Right. Yeah. Or the unveiling. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so God is, is showing us a message and the future from this book. What else? <coughs> It says here that uh, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Ha! Ah, what's the word of God? That's confusing to me. Okay. The Bible is the word of God. The God, God's Bible is called the word. the word. Where else do we hear that phrase? In the beginning was the word. In, right. In the word was God. With God is the word. God is the word. And the word Without was God. God. Right. First verse of, of the book of John says that. Doesn't it also say word without end? World without end? Yes. But we're talking about the word right now. So the word is another name for who? God. 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 Jesus. God, yes. Jesus. But more Jesus. specifically, Jesus. 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 And testimony is the witness. The witness that Jesus is having. And that we we witness who Jesus is. Uh, so the word who all right, so in this section it says that the an angel appeared to John, testifies to everything he saw, that is the word of God in the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he could be talking about the Bible and Jesus, or he could be talking about Jesus, who is also God. I like the next one. Yeah. What's the what's chapter verse three about? The one who reads it. The one who reads what? Is the blessed. This this book. Yeah. This prophecy. Talking yeah. about this what? book of Revelation. Right. Because this is a prophecy. <clears throat> uh, it's a message. So the one who reads this book, book of Revelation, is what? Blessed. 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 Is that all you got to do is read it? No. You take it to heart. Yeah. Hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to hear it. Just like when Jesus was on and take earth with his apostles and he preaches about keeping your eyes turned to heaven and watching for the signs. And I mean, Jesus talks about that himself to the apostles, mm -hmm. how important it is to so, be alert and pay attention to him. So reading this book, Revelation, and doing what? Taking it to heart. Taking, taking it to heart will result in what? A blessing. Yeah. There's no other book in the Bible where it says that. Specifically. It says if you read this book that we're about to read and you take it to heart, God will bless you. He'll pour out a blessing on us. So God is putting some pretty good importance on this book. So Maybe some churches need to be thinking, why have we neglected it all these years? Really? Why aren't they talking about Revelation? Right. Why did yeah, they just right. kind of steer away from that? Well, because it's what, uh, it's what they used to accuse the Baptists of is scaring people with hell and damnation, right? Yeah. Rather yeah. than kind of the love of Jesus, Jesus Christ and, yeah. and whatnot, it was all about... It's too scary because it's too close <coughs> to home and it's almost here, that's why. Mm -hmm. I don't care how they get to heaven as long as they get there. Yeah. <laughs> so if it I, takes fear, I say scare them. So if I read this twice, I'll be in good shape now. What's that? If I read this twice, I'll be in good shape. You'll get two blessings. <laughs> blessings. <laughs> as long as you take it to heart. And he's saying, the time is near. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we have to remember, uh, how many years ago one, was day, <laughs> one day in God's sight is 
thousand is equal years. to what? A thousand years. A thousand, a thousand years. years. It is like a thousand years. Right. So it's it's like it. more than a thousand years. <laughs> right. So how long has it been? <laughs> a lot. Two, two thousand. Two thousand. <laughs> but what was the time frame before John wrote this? Yeah. That yeah. Adam was created. I mean, right. right. Four thousand. Approximately four thousand. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, so the number seven is perfection. So maybe we gotta wait till three more years. <laughs> Not, no, because later on we're gonna read about a thousand year period. That's gonna make the seven thousand. There's your seven. Oh. We've already used up six. We, oh. In the millennial reign is a thousand. So there's your seven. There's your seven. So when's the millennial start? Soon. <laughs> We're going to read about it. <laughs> so. so, so their their time, uh, how they countered it, and our time today. That's well, still. It, it was pretty similar. Their their calendar was thirty days a month. Ours is thirty and thirty one. Right. So it's pretty, still pretty close. So. Okay. So let's keep going, brother Steve. Verse four. This is, uh, my Bible says, Readings in Doxology, John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kingdom of the earth. Uh, what do we see in there? Ooh, mm -hmm. Who's talking? And who is? And who was? And who was to come? No, and who's, right who's writing the letter? John. 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 To who? The seven, seven churches. churches. Seven specific churches uh, in, Asia. in Asia. In Asia, yeah. And what's he telling them? Right off. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Oh, what's that mean? Grace and peace. Grace and peace to you. What's, it, what's that mean, though? The Lord. He, he grace, tell them? By the grace of, of God. Jesus, it's like by the pardoning of God, right? We talked about that this morning. Grace. Yeah. Would you say it was, Steve? Unmerited favor. Yeah. That's Jesus. So, pardoning. Unmerited or unearned favor is what grace is. It's God's gifts to us. So he's not, he's starting out trying to put people at peace, mm -hmm. at ease. Mm -hmm. This is good, good news. Grace and peace to you. Mm -hmm. From whom? Him who is, mm -hmm. who was, was and, and is to come. come. Who's that? Jesus. 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 <laughs> so his message is saying, Jesus is saying, grace and peace to you. And from the seven spirits before his throne, Let's turn over to Isaiah. Keep your spot, but let's turn over to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah. Way back in the middle of the Bible. Oh, why is Isaiah chapter 11? Isaiah. Or if Sandy finds it before you, just look on the dirt. Isaiah 11. I've got Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah 7. 11. 11. 11. I got it. I got it. It's right here. <laughs> Isaiah 11. It's before Jeremiah. After Psalms. Got him. What about it? What are we doing? Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. Everybody got it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, what's, what's this part here? It says, um, the firstborn from the dead. What does that mean? What, what verse were you looking at? He was the first to be resurrected. Okay. It's, it's talking about when Jesus rose from the dead. He's the firstborn, the first one to rise from the dead and go to heaven. That was when he was crucified. And he was in the tomb for three days. Okay. So it's, it's telling us we're talking about Jesus. Um, but I wanted to point out something where it says the seven spirits. Mm -hmm. Chapter 11, first... Uh, Couple verses there. Do you have it, Sandy? What chapter? Chapter 11. 11 of Isaiah. Yeah. First two verses. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. 
The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Okay, hold it. Uh, we just finished the book of Ruth. Ruth was the, the mother of Obed, who was the mother of Jesse, who was the father, I mean, father of Jesse, father of David. So this is referring to David's line, when it says, from the stump of Jesse, somebody in David's and Jesse's lineage. When we looked at the genealogy of Jesus, where did he come from? King David's line. So this is talking about Jesus. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. Talking about Jesus. And then it says something will rest on him. This. Now count those, those spirits. The spirit of the Lord. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding. Counsel. Power. Spirit of knowledge. And the fear of the Lord. Seven. Seven. So that's what it's talking about. The Holy Spirit has seven sides to him, seven attributes. His, he has knowledge, wisdom, fear, uh, all those things we so just kind of like a branch, branching off in seven right. directions. You know? So he's talking about Jesus and the Holy Spirit now. So, and then chapter, verse 5 says, from Jesus Christ, so it doesn't leave us guessing anymore. From Jesus, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the resurrection, and the ruler of what? Kings of the earth. Of the earth. Kings of the earth. In the end, when Jesus comes back, that's where he's going to put down all the other governments, all the other kings and princes, and he's going to be the ruler. We'll no longer have presidents and king of Siam and king of England and queen, all that. It'll be king of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus. Any questions on that part? And just to make sure we know who he's talking about. What's the next half of verse 5, Steve? <clears throat> and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Any doubt now who it is? <laughs> his blood is what took care of our sins. Keep going. And has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Okay. What's that business? Priests. We're all going to be Catholics? No. <laughs> that will not happen. No. <laughs> he doesn't mean that, does he? No. He's talking about uh, priests as a as a religious leader. Right. Well, it, Jesus is referred to as the high priest. Right. As, well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it talks about when we get to heaven, we're going to know God like he knows us. We're going to be considered kings and priests because we get to reign with them. We, you know, he, he's glorifying us, giving us a new body. He's we're getting crowns, uh, and we're going to be considered a priest because we are made holy, perfect when we get to heaven. And His, and his image. Yes. Yeah. So that's what he's referring to. Uh, see, makes, you uh, want, makes you wonder if it says we're going to be in His image, we all going to look alike. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Probably not. Uh, in his in his image we're in His now. image now. now. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we look different, right? Yeah, yeah. And we're still in His image, right? So we can still be different and be in His well, image. Well, it's like when He died and rose. I mean, basically, He 
he there was some difference because Mary didn't recognize him and he right. he spoke. Right. But basically he was he looked the he had same. Had to see the marks of his hands. Yeah. yeah. Right. And he didn't look like a a ghost. No. Or a wispy right. smoke. No. You know, he, no, he, he looked like a, a human being. Yeah. Right. Right. If, I, if I go up there and he's got a mug like mine, <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. I get there, Calvin, and it's like, Calvin. Calvin. <laughs> no, it's Jesus. No. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm sure we're going to be surprised about a lot of things, too. Oh, you know, our God. ideas aren't going to no. necessarily. Well, you know what? Maybe he just changes his image Maybe. Like for every individual he encounters. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, that, that's a possibility too. But when he was, when he when Jesus rose, he was healed of all his scars and wounds except for the, the marks on his hands, right? I don't I mean, know. His he hands and his feet and, and his he was socks. Beaten to beaten to death almost. And yeah. Yeah. But what about it the whipping? Yeah, it doesn't oh, say, say it. anything about yeah. that. Yeah. That's I don't think we know. Yeah. That's I, thought, I thought the Bible yeah. said somewhere where listen. <laughs> When you die and go to God's kingdom, you're like made anew. You're not going to have any pain or suffering. Or when we get to heaven, all right. That, right? Yeah. So, does that mean my body is going to be yeah. made like youthful again? I, I think you so. Won't so have, I won't have all those the sufferings and the pain on my no body. No ailments. You won't have bones and flesh. You won't have that. Pastor Gray used to say he thought you'd be in your flower of your youth. Right. You know, like the. Better than we can picture, but no defense. Are we supposed to have bone and flesh? I didn't think we were. No, we have a spiritual body, but it'll look like bone and flesh. It'll, right. it'll have that shape. It was like when Jesus rose. It was like right. when, when he looked, Mary didn't recognize him, but I just can't picture him after being risen that he'd still be covered in blood. And, no. And no, scars I don't think he'd have that, but he might have some scars. I don't know. Yeah. And maybe his scars are mm -hmm. so for the proof of yeah. the crucifixion. Yeah. He's the only one. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think I could do this. So it might be six yeah. yeah. But he's got, I mean, if you think about all the uh, children that die in the womb, things like that, that don't even have their developed physical bodies, there has got to be something where when they <clears throat> come back in their heavenly resurrected spiritual body they're not going to look like no you know right. mm -hmm. yeah. and, and they right. may look like like uh they would have looked like if right. they lived i know it's exactly yeah. what you know i always you know, wondered the DNA. i always wondered like what age does he bring us back if we're not in our old decrepit bodies because we're made anew right. so does that mean I'm going to come back in my 30s? Everything 20s. Probably 20s. <laughs> Everything yeah. I've read. I mean, I'll I'm say always, about 25. I mean, I'm like, that. Like, I like to have I don't think so. Well, if he did yeah. that, though, there would be some lot of old people yeah. running around, yeah, too, yeah, right? That's true. Well, there's nothing wrong. I, I don't have old people. <laughs> But I don't I'll want to be old people. Home. I want to be young people. <laughs> well, maybe we'll become, we'll come back at our current age, but we'll be healthy, healthy. strong. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Everything that I read that always says middle age. I mean, that's what I had always thought when I. I would think that. that you know, I would when I. Come back at the same I've always heard that we come back at middle age. age. Like in the 30s. That would be my kind of I certainly wouldn't say no. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, who knows? Well, I don't know. And, and really, yeah. does it so, matter? No. It's going to be I, perfect. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's Even if I have this old body, I don't care. <laughs> the, the, the soul that matters. It's the right. soul that's going to be brought back in whatever heavenly yeah. form he chooses. Well, uh, is, it, is it in the Bible, or maybe I read in another uh, spiritual book or something, but I've read somewhere that we will recognize each other. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if I was yeah. come back in my twenties, you, you're not gonna recognize me, okay? So maybe we do come back in our our, our current order. form, but but may Paul you doesn't want to be in his old body, free of pain and suffering. <laughs> no. no, I'm just thinking. Well, we I know it's gonna be good. That's I mean, enough I for me. Yeah. I don't think I'd recognize my father if he was 15 or 20. Okay, so or what about the people that are burned in fires? They're not gonna recognize them. Yeah. Would you right now? Well, we're going to have a new body, no. you know, in a new spirit, and, and God will give us that 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we recognize each other. So there are certain things mm -hmm. that will remain mm -hmm. mystery. Yeah. In this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In this we'll part recognize our souls. Yeah. Because it like we were reunited yeah. with our loved ones, are so we will know them. Who you so are. Right. Yeah. How do we know yeah. them? Well, it's like so we you know, we're not recognized. We're going to have new minds. We recognize our I think it's the spirit and the soul connection that recognizes. The spirit and soul. Yeah, could very well be. I mean, you're in heaven and I go to heaven. I think so. Well, and, and we're also taught that there's no more sorrow. No more crying. So that means um, that we will also not know who we have lost or left behind right. while we were here on earth because there are going to be people that we knew, loved, cared for that didn't go to heaven. Right. And if there's no more sorrow, then he's going to take that piece yeah. away from us as well. Yeah. So there are going to be trans. Transformations on that piece that we can't really imagine. You can kind of think of Earth as a school. We're all here to learn a particular thing, and when that learning, that training is done, we're taken. And when we come back, we will know that our lesson was, lesson was learned. And so we basically go back to God with accomplishment. We accomplish what we, we had set out to do. Well, we never arrive until we get to heaven. And That's why we're always learning. The journey is over when we come back to him. The journey is over. Right. And he knows once that we would be able to see those that have gone before us, but not be able to talk or speak or relate, you know, just to be able to be with them and enjoy their knowledge. When? That's, when would that happen? That was what I was told. When you went to heaven? Yes. Well, when why would we run. not be able to communicate? Huh? Yeah. Why would we not be able to communicate? Well, you could see each other. You why could. couldn't we talk? You were just told that by someone, right? Well, I don't know, but that's I think they I left that part out. Yeah. But that's I think, like I said, it's like we'll be reunited, reunited and we will know <laughs> our loved ones. So I think my point was, so I think you would, if you were to die tomorrow, you would be in your same physical form. You wouldn't be in your 20s or 30s. I feel like you would be in your same physical form, just free of pain and sickness. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't I argue about it. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't recognize you. Though. Right. You were like, when they say in Revelation, it's 20, I wouldn't I might not recognize yeah. you, you know? Could be. Yeah, know. Who knows? So, am I getting there? Are you a troublemaker? Probably. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, it's have like, some fun in heaven, okay. right? It's sort of, it's sort of like transcendental. Not as a sense of humor. <laughs> no. It does. Well, it must have. take someone who knows the future, okay? They instinctively know that if you walked out of here, you're going to have a car accident. Somehow they know, right? It's that same telepathic <laughs> thinking, I believe, <laughs> when we're in heaven, that we can communicate that way. It's through I don't the know. mind more than it is through the verbal. That's what I think. All I know is what is written here. Yeah. So let's keep reading before we run out of time. Just <laughs> <laughs> sure. Look. Um, it, it? Behold. Yes. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so. Amen. Ah, what's that? Uh, Talking about who? Jesus. Jesus. When he comes, what's he coming with? The clouds. In the clouds. We used to clouds. laugh. That we had a song we used to sing years ago. Oh, for cloudless day. Oh, yeah. Oh, for the cloudless day. Yeah. It, he's coming in the clouds. Yeah. So we don't want cloudless clouds, day. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure he can make his own clouds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cloudless guy. Yeah. <laughs> He cometh with the crowds, and who's going to get to see him? Everybody. 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 Regardless of where they're. Everybody's yeah. going to see him. Mm -hmm. There's another place that talks about, as the lightning shines from the east to the west, so shall his coming be. Mm -hmm. So everybody in the world is going to see Jesus when he yeah. comes. Yeah. So this is something to keep in mind and, and be alert for. If we live long enough, there's going to come a time when the Antichrist, the fake, comes yes. on the scene. Yeah. And they're going to they're gonna try to get people to believe I, this that. is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the quickest way to tell is, wait a minute, I didn't see him when he got here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Oh, you had to watch CNN in order to see him. No. Or something else. No, no. no. Coming in the clouds, every eye should see him. Don't, you don't need a TV set. As well as in the same, very same verse. So all if we don't all see him, yeah. don't believe it's Jesus. Mm -hmm. It says right there. Could be the devil. That's what that's the Antichrist what is. Yeah. Is the person that's been taken over by the devil. Of trying to trick us into believing that he's Jesus. And there's a lot of people that know that Jesus is supposed to come back, right? Yeah. So when somebody comes back and says they're Jesus, and the whole world's starting to talk about it, the Christians ought to say, wait a minute, I didn't see him come. That's the Antichrist. Yeah. Throw the Bible mm -hmm. in their lap and say, here, read the first chapter. Right. But at the moment he comes back, how do you know if your neighbor saw him, if everybody saw him at the same time? Because well, I'll you know, know if I inside, saw him. Inside, you know, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, well, it's everybody, everybody's going to see it. Everybody's everybody's see it so, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think so. Jesus is going to make, make sure when he comes back, you're everybody gonna knows. Yeah. He's not going to leave us in guessing game. And isn't, I isn't the Bible saying also say he will <coughs> only come after the, is it the second trump? The last trump. The last trump is blown. So if you don't hear that, it's not him. It's the Antichrist. Well, that's a good good point too. But so this, is a, this is one. It's an easy one Maybe anyway. Maybe it's President Trump coming back the second time. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that, that, there is something to oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, either either God was just playing a good joke on us. There's got to be some connection to a man oh, called see. Trump. If he wins the next election, <laughs> in the end times, that we're, yeah. look at the way so that he created in certain circles yeah. that really have steered us as a oh, nation yeah. in is very wrong directions. Is it the second Trump? The last Trump. Two thousand. How many still are terrified of him seven. coming back? Seven. Yeah. Seven. He's going back in 2024, okay, well, so if it comes back the second time, it's not that. So pay attention to what I'm saying. Seven. All right, Seven. where are you, Cheryl? Uh, oh. Verse 8. Oh, I, I want to touch on this one thing. He's clarifying who he is because that's the one who was pierced. All kindreds of the earth are going to wail because of him. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's a lot of people that aren't going to want Jesus coming Unbelief, back. Right? Which is another piece, like you said, um, being able to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not going to make it a secret when he appears in the clouds and when he is uh, appears all people will wail because of him or will mourn because yes. of him is what mine says it means they're going to know at that very moment who he is and what their life it means late. at that moment it's too and, late and the opposite is what happens when yeah. the antichrist appears on the scene it says the whole world will go after him yeah they'll embrace him right they're in, embracing him but when Jesus comes back, all the ones that are too late are going to mourn. Well, don't you think all this with the COVID and everything, you know, they're trying to uh, brainwash us. Yes. So I think it's just a foreshadow of what, you know, they're laying the foundation of they're creating that one of world. us believing anything that they tell us. Right. Right. And part of what uh, they say, how do you you control a society? Well, you start indoctrinating the yes. children. Yes. And what's happening in the schools was really exposed yeah. during COVID. And yes. now when people are trying to fight back, we see the government attacking those parents. Exactly. Yes. Trying to fight back against mm -hmm. this indoctrination and all right. of these things that are dividing us and steering us into very dangerous Yes. Yes. And it's worldwide. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Used to be a lot of things happen in this country, mm -hmm. not yeah. over here. Right. Over here. Everywhere. That COVID was worldwide. Worldwide, exactly. You know? Oh, what a great tool the devil did when he used that. Look how he used it mm -hmm. to divide people, Isolate. to close yeah. churches, yeah. Mm -hmm. to yeah. keep people in fear. Yeah. And what did you have access to? Your social media, your, you know, whatever yeah. could be beamed into your home, mm -hmm. yeah. which, you know, even 50 years ago or so was not, would not have been possible to the extent that it is now right. as widespread. Right. Right. So things are changing yeah. so quickly in that way. Good things were shut down and pushed aside. Evil things were kept open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, who benefited from right. that COVID Our rooms business? were kept open. The devil. Yes. He's the one that benefited. Mm -hmm. Not the churches. 
Uh, yeah, because they tried to shut down churches, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they did. Yeah. Yeah. They did for a lot of them. Uh, even arrested the pastor for trying to keep the, the church, church open. open. In California, yeah. they would even try to get home gatherings. There was a, a, oh, really? a time there. I yeah. know we had talked about it. Where okay, they that's had, the next uh, one of the places in California where if they saw uh, vehicles gathered, uh, they mm -hmm. would try to right. um, get them for it because you weren't supposed to gather more than so. They had a limit on how many people yes. could gather together, and yeah. so they were trying to catch people. Right in Messina, they yeah. threatened to charge the Baptist preacher. I, we know him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were going to ticket him if he didn't quit meeting in the parking lot. The yeah. People in their cars, cars. Yeah. Yeah. listening on the radio, I think. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And he was preaching from the porch outside. Mm -hmm. And they were going to ticket him if he didn't quit doing it. They were doing that down But he fought it, yeah. and he won. he won. They decided, yeah. okay, we'll let you go. Well, and as you read this book, you wonder how could the persecution really get to the point that nowadays, in our day and age, you could be beheaded yeah. for supporting God. Mm -hmm. But in the rate that things are changing, yeah. it's yeah. not so hard to believe right. that we could get to that point quickly. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It, it yeah. starts well, small. Don't they, don't, don't they do that overseas? Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Certain yeah. places. Taliban, you... Taliban, they just mm -hmm. kill you they want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they had a, a stint during Obama, Obama's um, leadership where they were filming it for us to, yeah. to show the threat that they will behead mm -hmm. innocent people. Mm -hmm. For not being Muslim. Right. right. So yeah. our time is almost just, up. Uh, Governor Newsom just signed a law in California for abortion, infanticide, they call it. You can kill a baby now up to 28 days after birth. After birth. After, after birth. birth. What? Oh, what? Yeah. That passed? Yeah. He signed he it. He signed law it. in California. In California. How oh, sick is that? Well, Newsom is like, he was the one that was well, my, doing all this. My answer to that too. was, they should take a newborn child to his home and give him that newborn child and then 28 days later say, you need to kill that baby. Mm. Oh. Says. Okay. Yeah. That is like oh. insane. Like, well, yeah. Yeah. See, it's what an insane. It's, hap it's happened. English. He is an evil man as far as I know. Where was this in California? He is just plain <laughs> evil. What's his name, Steve? Newsom. Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom. He's he was also in charge of California. Shutting everything ACLJ down. ACLJ just mm -hmm. sent that to me. What? I got it on an email. Yeah, he's running for president this year. Or next well, year. he's he he talking about it, I guess. But, in California. Yeah. Well, let's finish with verse 8, then we'll go to prayer and uh, we'll pick it up again next week. Kathy, you want to read Okay. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and was and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. Amen. Amen. Jesus was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. He's present when John was writing this. And he's coming back. Anything else? Oh, we got uh, eight verses. We got quite a bit, didn't we? We did. We got off track. There's a lot in this. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to pass this around. Uh, we're going to be talking about the seven churches. He briefly mentioned it, uh, I think, and the letters to them. Mm -hmm. And it's modern day Turkey. Those are where those. It's on the, you have Israel, and you have the Mediterranean Sea, and across the sea is Turkey. And that's where those seven churches were in that Turkey, we're going to be reading all about. They were all in Turkey. Oh. Present day Turkey. Back then it was called Asia. <coughs> I just thought you might want to see that. Uh, okay, so we got a lot to be watching for this week. The clouds. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens. Well, I didn't even know. The fun part that bothers me about that is that like this year. Yeah. He's gonna be uh, one person or God or whatever, but he's gonna be the only ruler. Yeah, because they're all counterfeit. They're all trying to take God's place and be the one world ruler. And Hitler is the only one I can think of that uh, came close to it. Yeah, but they had Alexander the Great. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, Babylonians, they did it. Uh, Egyptians. Yeah. Been a lot of rural rulers. Yeah. Or at least close. Yeah. yeah. And they believe themselves to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, Alexander, he had a lot of territory. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and he's only 30 years old. Yeah. And then he died. Yeah. That's pretty amazing, too. Makes, that there was makes you wonder more about to that. Conquer. Well, it didn't, what? it's suspected that he was poisoned. Yeah. Because his. Well, no, but it makes you wonder how, were, how he could get so far and so young. Yeah. Well, in Ten years? Was it Patmos at Greek Island? Off the island? Oh, I can't remember. Of, uh, Greece. That's uh, not showing. That map doesn't show Greece, I don't believe. But. No, it doesn't. But it's probably in here somewhere. I'll, I'll look after I show them these. Yeah, we're done. This is where the seven churches are. Yeah. Back then, this is Israel. Mm -hmm. and they had churches scattered around here. Yeah. They were the early churches. And that's wow. what these letters we're going to be reading about wow. soon. He was writing letters to these guys. <laughs> well, the church Israel is here. Across the Mediterranean, and they had seven churches scattered around there. That, was in that Paul started, church. most of them, if not all of them. Oh, Remember oh. when he traveled by land? He was traveling all through that area. Oh my goodness. So they so established right? seven churches. Yep, yeah. yeah. and now we're going to be reading about these letters that God is telling John to write to right. those churches. Up there in Turkey. Way up and, the top. Yeah, all through there. All around and the churches. A lot of, that's another good point about Revelation. There's a lot of places that there's more than one meaning, more than one application. Uh, these churches. Didn't show Rebecca? No, it's not. She said oh, she didn't want to. Oh, okay. The. Uh, now I lost my train of thought again. Sorry. The churches, <laughs> there's more than one meaning. Yes. And, and <laughs> the churches can be. Uh, identified as church ages instead of just a particular church and when we when we read about each church and what the God is wanting to say to them scholars have looked at that and said that was this church age that was this church age that was today and a lot of people think that there's this one church called the Laodiceans they were, to, they were told that they were lukewarm. They weren't hot or cold toward God. They cooled off. And a lot of people feel that that's describing the church today, mm -hmm. as far as the, the majority of the churches are. They're lukewarm, not hot or cold. No fever or fervor. Mm -hmm. You know, come to church, oh, I'm okay, go home. See you next week. Where's our fervor? You know, the, when the churches started, those people were beaten. Some were de beheaded. All right. But did they stop going to church? No. They had fervor. They had the Holy Spirit. They were on fire. So there's a lot, lot to uh, learn in the next uh, several weeks when we go through this. Yeah, because I'd like to learn, learn a little bit more about him coming back. Yeah, well, that's you what that whole book is about. Into this. <laughs> oh, man. That's some pretty heavy duty, scary stuff. We're going to take you next year to that men's retreat. Uh, yeah. Up at West Shady. That's a good idea. And you will thoroughly enjoy that. You will learn probably more there than we could even teach you. Is there lots of beer? No. None, <laughs> none of that. <laughs> none of that. <laughs> Mike finds a new beer. A lot of spirits. <laughs> a lot of spirits. Sister Rebecca, would you close us? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather to study your word. We pray that you help us learn from your message, um, that you help us to apply it to our life every day. Uh, we pray that you will encourage us to have fervor and to um, speak for you and be your glory here on earth until you return. 
um, we pray that you help us encourage and support and show our love to one another through the good and the bad. Um, and we are so thankful that you give us your word to guide us. Uh, be with us this week, Lord, and bless us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. What's the definition of fervor? On fire. Yeah. On fire. Energetic. Zeal. Never heard it before. Opposite of slumber. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shut this off. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, <laughs>